Hey everybody, John Wagdon here with Dev Central. We're bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're gonna to talk about a brand new attack that our Silverline Security Operations Center just found out about and, uh, and is just starting to see in the wild. And uh, we, we've dubbed this attack the Mop Sync Attack. Uh, Mop stands for Multiple Originating Protocols and then Sync because it's like they're all coming at you all at once. So just kind of everything all at once. The, uh, the basis of this attack uh, deals with um, the IP header information in a packet that's sent from the attacker to the victim and the manipulation of the protocol type in that header. So just to kind of explain it here really quick, in an IPv4 header, here's, a, here's an IPv4 header, and in that header there are several fields. So I'll just kind of draw like a little uh, uh, representation of this thing. So there's things like version number, um, there's things like uh, total length um, of the, uh, the packet. And, uh, but one of the things is protocol, protocol. And then a couple of other ones are like source IP. So I'll say source IP and then like destination IP as well. All right. And I'm going to circle this protocol right here. And the protocol uh, field in an IPv4 header, IPv6 headers have this as well, uh, the same idea. It's, it's called something slightly different, but the same idea uh, is, is true. Uh, but the protocol field in the IP header um, defines what's called or what, what's described as the next level protocol or the protocol of the payload um, that this IP packet is going to have. Uh, so, for example, a very popular one is TCP, the Transmission Control Protocol. That's where you get the whole TCP IP. So it's TCP um, transmitted in an IP packet, right? Uh, another one, another popular one is UDP, the User Datagram Protocol. Uh, there's things like OSPF, Open Shortest Path First. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them, and each one of them have a number, and the, uh, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, or IANA, uh, describes all this and defines all this. And there's up to 255 protocols that are possible to be defined inside this IP header. Um, and so that's all well and good, and, you know, and, and that's the way that it all works um, until someone like this attacker is going to use that to send some malicious uh, DDoS attacks at its victim. So the way that the, that the attacker utilizes this is I'm going to say you have an attacker uh, here who has maybe control of a botnet and there's all these, you know, bot machines that the, uh, that the attacker has control of. And then you have the victim site over here. So we'll just call this, you know, victim.com, right? So this is your web application that the attacker's trying to knock down. Um, what, the, what the attacker will do is from each of these bots in, in the uh, botnet, uh, we'll send, um, you know, these IP packets to the victim machine. And so this is IP packet, you know, the, the first one or whatever, but the protocol that is defined in that IP packet and in that IP header is going to randomly change, uh, you know, per packet that's sent to the victim web application. So maybe for this first one, you know, you have IP packet uh, with protocol, um, you know, three defined, or, you know, here's another one with protocol, uh, you know, 16 or whatever it is, you know. And so these are all... Um, these are all valid things to be able to define in an IP header. The problem is, you know, protocol three, whatever it is, um, is not actually the packet or the payload that's being sent here. And that's never the intent of the attacker. The attacker just wants to flood the victim so that, frankly, when the victim gets all of these different packets with all these different protocols defined in these IP headers, frankly, the victim is going to not quite know what to do with them uh, because if you have not explicitly filtered out the protocol type or the protocol definition of the IP header um, from your web application, then you, frankly, you're going to accept any and all of these. And so it's going to come in, all these packets are going to come into your website. So uh, a, a couple other things, like I said, that are defined here are the destination and source IP um, in the header. So the source IP comes back here to the attacker, and the attacker is going to spoof that source IP uh, because, frankly, the, none, of these, none of these packets or none, none of this uh, communication establishes a full handshake. There's no, there's no completed connection that ever happens here. And again, that's not the point of what the attacker wants to do. It, the attacker just wants to flood a bunch of, uh, 
you know, wants to flood the victim site with a bunch of uh, traffic. Um, so the source IP is going to be spoofed. So from a, from a mitigation perspective, there's no way that you, the website or the web application owner, the web application defender could come back and say, well, just block that IP address. Frankly, it's going to be the IP address of some unsuspecting person, you know, way over here somewhere. So uh, you, you may actually do more harm than good by blocking that IP address. Um, but the destination IP is always going to be the IP address of the victim uh, site, right? So in the midst of all this, what ends up happening, again, the, the attacker sends all of these packets, these IP packets to the victim site. And what we have seen or what our Silverline SOC team has seen in terms of the volume of this is uh, I'm going to put greater than uh, 10 gigabits per second um, in terms of uh, throughput or just volume that our uh, you know these that, that this attack generates. Um, some people may look at that and say not as huge of a deal. Uh, a lot of people though would look at that and say, hey, for many companies today, uh, the 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 pipe that companies have coming into their network maxes out at like one gigabit per second. And so if you hit 10, then you've, you know, you've, you've tipped over their, uh, their web application a long time ago. So, um, so anyway, so it's, uh, this, can, this can be a very effective uh, attack from the attacker perspective. Um, and so, uh, so you need to guard against this kind of thing. Uh, like I said, this is, this is something that we're just now seeing in the wild and we're, we're seeing it more and more in recent months. And so we expect that it's gonna continue uh, to happen more in the future. Um, one thing that you can do from a mitigation perspective is I'll put uh, I'll put Silverline up here, um, and so you can you can uh, introduce our Silverline services uh, here in front of your web application, so that any um, you know any request that comes into your website goes through our Silverline uh, scrubbing centers. Frankly, our Silverline scrubbing centers have capacity to absorb a lot of these attacks, certainly more than the 10 gigabits per second. Uh, but beyond that. And frankly, maybe more important or, or just as important uh, is they have the mitigation uh, actions. They have the expertise to know that when this thing happens, when something like this happens, then they know how to turn it off. Uh, they formulated some pretty sophisticated filtering uh, capabilities to be able to say in the IP header itself, I'm going to look at the protocol field in that specifically, and I'm going to work with the customer back here that owns the website that's, that would potentially be under attack. And we're going to see what protocols do you expect. There are some web applications out there uh, that frankly just, just need TCP uh, from a protocol perspective and an IP header. Uh, they don't need, you know, the what, whatever. I mean, some of these protocols get really obscure that no one ever uses. And so if you don't explicitly shut them down, then this type of attack is going to get through and it's going to, it's going to uh, affect your web application. So anyway, so our Silverline team has done some great work to figure out some really cool mitigation actions to, uh, uh, to filter out unwanted protocols, and then that just lets the, uh, the needed protocols through. Um, and frankly, even those protocols, if those, if those protocols are still part of this attack, then there are even more defenses that can come into play on how to block those, even they, if they have the appropriate protocol um, you know, in the IP header. But most of these do not have the appropriate protocol, and, that's, and frankly, that's the point of this attack, is to randomize the protocol number in the IP header so that all of these IP packets just flood the victim site. So, uh, so anyway, so hopefully you've learned a little bit about this mop sync attack uh, here today and, uh, and how maybe our Silverline services can help with this. And even if you don't have Silverline, I mean, this is the world we live in today. There's these DDoS attacks happening all the time. These attackers are getting, frankly, pretty sophisticated and creative on how to come at a victim site. And so, uh, so you need to be prepared for this thing. You need to have a defense ready for these things. So, uh, so hey, thanks for watching this Lightboard Lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our DC logo and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.